Hey everyone, it's Jack from whatculture.com and wasn't Battleground f***ing sh**? Yes it was, it was, p p people have generally considered it to be the worst WWE pay-per-view of the year. Grey Collie came back, the Punjabi prison match itself was a disappointment, Cena and Rusev had a bit of a rubbish flag match. The, the only really good match on the show that everyone was impressed with was the tag match and that happened first and it was just sort of all downhill from there. Could this week's Smackdown possibly have mended things, bit of damage limitation. Let's find out as we look at all the ups and all the downs from this week's SmackDown Live in Richmond, Virginia. F ABL, let's go. We start things off with an up as the show opened with Kevin Owens, the new United States champion. He came out to the ring to gloat about winning his title straight back from AJ Styles at the pay-per-view in a finish many saw as kind of a botched finish that wasn't meant to happen given the confused reactions of Styles himself and the referee as well. Owens bragged in the ring for a little bit, then Styles came out and demanded his rematch, and then Chris Jericho came back. Jericho's back. Yay. Good. He's got a sick new haircut, bro. He's also got the list still and his scarf and everything. He's already changed his gimmick. Um, but he is the same kind of lovable, dickish baby face that he was when he left. And he said that he also has a rematch clause. And then Shane McMahon came out and said, look, you've both got rematch clauses. You're all going to have a triple threat match for the belt in the main event tonight in Richmond, Virginia. This was an exciting segment. Great to see Jericho back. Genuine surprise as well, which you don't really get these days thanks to the internet. And yeah, it's enough. Now, I realized when I watched this segment that I didn't know anything about Richmond, Virginia, so I've printed off a few Richmond facts. Hashtag Richmond facts, uh, which I'm just gonna read out throughout the video. Uh, Rich Richmond was founded and named by William Byrd II uh, after the English town of the same name, which is now part of Southwest London, Richmond, upon Thames. Next up, our first match of the show between Shinsuke Nakamura and Baron Corbin. This was better than their lacklustre pay-per-view outing on Sunday night, but it wasn't great. It was good enough to earn the match and up, and it was okay. The, the guys clearly worked well, a bit well together than they did on Sunday, but I wouldn't say they've got any sort of natural chemistry at all. It was all a bit clunky, particularly for a man of the caliber of Shinsuke Nakamura. In fact, I'm gonna give it down to the booking here because why would they uh, you know, make us pay for the screw finish on the pay-per-view and then give away the clean finish on TV? It's really backwards and it doesn't really make any sense. Also, if they were gonna protect Baron on the pay-per-view and just have him lose anyway, what's the point? He's Mr. Money in the Bank. If you're gonna protect him, protect him. If you're not, don't. It's all a bit wishy-washy, I don't like it, and this does get a down. In 2005, Richmond, Virginia was named the fifth most dangerous city in America. Uh, but since then, the crime rate has steadily fallen. These days, it's no longer even in the top 200. Good job, Richmond. Next up, the faltering SmackDown women's division continues to kind of decrease, decline in quality. Uh, Charlotte and Becky Lynch versus Tamina and Lana. It was a bad match, and I, I, no prizes for guessing which, which of the teams was to blame. It wasn't Charlotte and Becky's fault that this match was bad. Yes, Lana and Tamina are, uh, they're not a great pair. Lana is incredibly green in the ring and Tamina was never one of the strongest, uh, you know, competitors in the women's division anyway. So pairing them and making them rely on each other really hasn't seemed to have worked out so far. In fact, they might not even get a chance to turn things around as they bickered post-match once Charlotte and Becky had won. This gets a down, poor match, short, short term, cut short the, the alliance booking. Mm, hopefully, Natalia can kind of bring things through and have a good match with Naomi for the belt. And we've also got Carmella, remember, waiting in the wings with her money in the bank contract. Richmond lies on the James River, named after King James I of England. Richmond, Virginia. Next up, Jinder Mahal came to the ring and did his clap without the Grey Carly, which was sad. You'd think he'd invite him along after he essentially won the match for him on Sunday, but he came out alone without the Singh brothers as well, RIP to the one of them who fell through the announce table. Um, and he bragged and he cut a heel promo, he's the modern day Maharaja and all that, that sounded Spanish. Then Cena comes out and he is in full meta Deadpool mode. He refers to himself as Super Cena. He shouts for the sound guys to hit the trumpets, i.e. his own theme music, at the end of the promo. And basically he, the kind of, the underlying message of his wacky ass promo is that uh, he wants to face Jinder for the title at SummerSlam. But that was kind of nixed by Shane McMahon who came out and said, look, Shinsuke Nakamura won tonight and at the pay-per-view technically, but it was a DQ. Uh, and he says, you and Nakamura, Cena and Nakamura, are going to have a number one contenders match next week on SmackDown for the shot at Jinder at SummerSlam. 
can we at least pretend that Shinsuke might win? If he does, I'll be legitimately surprised. Uh, it feels as though Cena is going to have this one. Uh, big headline guy in one of the big headline matches at SummerSlam, you know what I mean? Um, but if it is Nakamura, well, it'll be quite cool as well. Two non, you know, non-American guys in a title match on a massive show. I'd quite like that. But regardless, I'd kind of look forward to either possibility. This gets an up. At least Randy Orton seems to be out of the picture for now. Richmond, Virginia has a signature sandwich, the Sailor Sandwich, which includes pastrami, knockwurst, Swiss cheese, and mustard. Sounds good. Try it out if you hit up Richmond, Virginia. Next up, a tag match featuring my boy, Sami Zayn, and Ben Potter's boy, Ty Dillinger, against the heel team of Aiden English and Mike Kanellis, with Maria Kanellis managing from ringside. Um, Mm, the ending sequence of this was really slick and good and you can probably find a gif of it out there if you want to find it on reddit somewhere uh, But apart from that this match didn't really achieve much in my opinion and it gets a down Simply because Sami Zayn beat you know Canellis clean on the pay-per-view and then pinned him again on Smackdown and it's like It's Mike's a new guy. He's the newest guy on the roster and he's immediately lost twice clean and it's just a bit, bit of, I don't want to say buried yet but he's got one of those gimmicks where you can imagine this man just going like, ah, damn it, find it funny for five minutes and then getting annoyed that he's a guy who's kind of overshadowed by his wife and it just never works out. Poor Mike. Poor Mike. Richmond, Virginia is where canned beer was made commercially available for the first time in 1935. Way to go, Richmond. Phone up the beers, phone them up in Richmond, Virginia. Next up, really simple segment. The New Day were about to come out and they did their, ah, oh, Richmond, home of the Sailor Sandwich, first place where people, and then uh, the Usos cut them off. I'm sure they were about to say that. The Usos just beat them down on the ramp, obviously really pissed off that they'd lost their tag belts in that really good match on Sunday. I enjoyed this, this gets an up, really effective. Might not have really been the time for a, yeah, another New Day promo rambling on, so it was good that the, the Usos cut them short. The Usos still look like a menace, and I'm not against a rematch at all. They've had a good feud so far. Now we're down for something that actually wasn't on the show. We were promised that we'd, re we'd find out the identity of the Fashion Police's mystery attackers at Battleground on Sunday, and then we didn't, and it said to be continued, leading us to assume that this week we'd find out, or maybe have some more clues. Nothing. There wasn't even a Fashion Files segment I wouldn't have given this a down if we hadn't already been promised it twice now, but I feel like get your shit together Smackdown I, I don't think they even know who the attackers are. I don't even think they know. I think they've thought mm, It was gonna be American Alpha and now Raw have stolen Jordan. I genuinely think that's what's happened Poor form. And now the main event Kevin Owens versus AJ Styles Versus Chris Jericho for the United States Championship and AJ Styles won a very good match The belt has been hot shotted yet again. You might be thinking am I gonna give this a down for the booking? I'm not I I, I I was against the finish on Sunday. It seems to be some sort of mistake someone fucked up somewhere But they've kind of rectified it and I'm not too mad about Kevin Owens getting his comeuppance after being super cocky about getting the belt back and stuff. It all kind of makes sense despite the belt moving a little more quickly than I would have liked it to. Uh, the saving grace though, and the thing that kind of tips it into the favour of the ups, this gets an up, is that the match was a very, very good one. Jericho showed no signs of rust, AJ was fantastic as always, and Kevin Owens, after the match, cut a really good heel promo saying, look, I want the belt back and we're gonna have a rematch next week. Next week's looking kind of stacked. Kevin Owens and AJ Styles, John Cena and Shinsuke Nakamura, definitely one to watch out for. And SmackDown seemed to have kind of rebounded all right from the, the travesty that was Battleground on Sunday. So there you have it, the ups of one, I think by one, if my calculations are correct. And we'll close things out with another lovely fact about Richmond, Virginia. Richmond has several sister cities, including its namesake, Richmond upon Thames, uh, Zhengzhou in China, Sigu in Mali and Saitama in Japan. I'm genuinely tempted to do some facts about one of those cities next time around. Maybe Saitama in Japan. I've been Jack from whatculture.com. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this special edition of Ups and Downs from Richmond, Virginia, and I'll see you soon.